So the Minnesota Sting is a 317A nonprofit in the state of Minnesota. Uh, and we are created and geared towards helping not only our community, but athletes have another avenue to play football after high school or college. So I founded the team in August of 2009 with a handful of other people. And we started the team off the premise that we thought we could do something better. So if somebody would like to join the team, they just have to be 18 years old and they pretty much just have to reach out to us either via Facebook or our website, stingfootball.net, and ask to play. And then we invite them to our open tryouts, uh, which we usually have in December and January of each year. Our team record since day one is 43, 22, and one. In 2012, we only lost one game, and in 2013, we actually went undefeated. We're the only team in league history of 2012 and 2013 that shut out the team in the championship game two years in a row. So that's a pretty neat accomplishment. Um, and then we actually got to travel down to Florida in January of 2014 and play for the national championship. Well, the team plays in the Northern Elite Football League, also known as the NEFL. Teams in the league are primarily out of Wisconsin and Minnesota. We usually have eight regular season games, and then teams will usually pick up one preseason game and maybe one to two um, during our bye weeks. And then a teams could even play a couple postseason games. So you're looking at about anywhere from 10 to 14 games. So the team does play for a trophy at the end of the year. But I would say that the biggest thing that our players play for is bragging rights, the honor. The honor of winning a championship at this level is huge. And you know, besides that ring and that trophy that these guys can earn, bragging rights is number one overall. I mean, to be able to tell their buddies and other teams that, hey, we beat you, we won, we're the best in the area, is one of the greatest accomplishments we could ever have. The Burnsville game is going to be tough. Uh, the Warriors was started by one of our co-founders, he actually left last year, wanted to start something closer to his hometown. So it's going to be really tough for us, not, not really on the field tough, but emotionally tough in the way that a lot of our veteran players uh, went over there because they live on that side of the city. And a lot of our coaching staff is now on that team as well. So it's going to be an emotional game for us to see a lot of those guys on the field again, not in maroon, black, and Vegas gold. Every team is responsible for finding a location to play their games. And so that means they have to have stands, they have to have scoreboards, they have to have locker rooms, and all that available to the other team that comes to visit them. And we've been really lucky to be able to play at Eastridge High School um, the last few years after we made that move on year three. It was founded on family, and we really like to give back to the community. So if anybody ever knows of any good causes or anything like that, we love to have different scenarios for each game. So like we might do breast cancer awareness game, we might do a benefit game for somebody that's struggling with something. Uh, we've done suicide prevention, that's one that we do every year. From to reach out to us via Facebook or email, and we'd love to, to put something together. We just love to be able to give back to our community in any way we can. We practice at Bielenberg Sports Center. It's in Woodbury. It's a new facility this year. Actually, last year, halfway through our season, we got to move in there. And we're really lucky that the city of Woodbury and their government has really embraced us being part of the community um, because we get to use this awesome facility. And right behind the facility is where our game field is. You know, there's probably not many teams in the league that watch film every week as a team, have classroom time, have an indoor facility like we have be able to make their players happy every week. I mean, we don't have to fight the weather, we don't have to fight bugs, it's just amazing. All of our coaching staff, they're all volunteers as well. None of our coaches get paid. Um, my wife and my mom work the front gate, my daughter takes our pictures, uh, my daughter you know, has ran our music. Uh, if you're ever at home games, you'll see me running around with a wireless microphone trying to do announcing while managing the, the uh, operations part. So it's definitely a unique structure that makes things fun. We encourage our players to invite their family and friends to games because that's probably a majority of our fan base comes from our players. So it's really important to us that we have players with good character that also want their family to come and enjoy games in our home games. And so that's our biggest way, right, is word of mouth. So the second way we've been doing things lately is doing social media uh, marketing. And that's worked out really well for us this last year. We got a lot of new faces and on tryouts. Uh, that we've never seen before that haven't even heard of semi-pro football until they saw our ad on Facebook. Uh, so that's our biggest thing. And then the last thing is we just go out and meet the community and do events. You know, we call ourselves Sting Nation. It's actually coined by a player of ours that's with the Warriors now. But we've stuck by that, right? And, and we've said the words, we ride together, we die together. 